Good morning, Birmingham Public Library viewers. My name is Candace Hardy, and I have the pleasure of serving as your outreach librarian with the Birmingham Public Library. This morning, we are so excited as we continue our national, nationwide celebration of Black history with a poetic look at the Black family. This morning, we thank the ALA as well as the Skonberg Center for Research of African American Culture um, for providing us this opportunity to lift every voice as we read in for justice this morning. As you see, many of our participants this morning are rocking their Read Woke Be Him t-shirts. And if you would like a t-shirt, please get in contact with Candace Hardy, that would be me, by calling 205-226- 3741. All of our t-shirts are um, your donation of $10 of purchasing a t-shirt will go towards a library program. Don't you want to be responsible for uh, hosting or for providing the public with another fun program just like this? Of course you do. So I expect to hear from you Monday morning, right? Right. Don't forget to like, and share and drop some hearts and a number of comments to our participants this morning as they deliver their poetic or maybe some dramatized poetry. I don't know what they have up their sleeves, but I hope that you're ready, all right? So this morning, I put you in the hands of our host, Mr. Carrie B. Carrie. Good morning, everyone. Thank y'all so much for joining our Reading for Justice program. Uh, I am your host, Poet Carrie B, in the place to be. Uh, I am the co-owner of the Majesty Lounge over in Bessemer, Alabama, where we are the home of the artists. Uh, so poets, uh, lyricists, rappers, musicians, you know, we have. You know, and, and I want to thank Candace Hardy for this uh honorable opportunity, you know, to share uh, poetry as well as, you know, joining uh, this uh, great panel as they, you know, share, you know, different pieces to celebrate the Black family. All right. So uh, I'll kick things off and then, you know, other panelists will also share their pieces and so on and so forth. All right. So my poem uh, that I wanted to dedicate to this program today, um, it is titled Dear Mama. Uh, Think of it as a poetic remix to, you know, Tupac's uh, song, all right? I want to thank my mother for, for teaching me and my brother to become a hustler in this game of life. And sometimes she would take some nickels and dimes, treat her children to a wine and dine, call it fine dining since everything was just fine. And it just blew my mind how she can tell when either me and my brother was crying after swallowing our tears and broken pride because in the streets, showing pain was the ultimate crime. As we walked internally bleeding on the inside, I want to thank my mother for teaching me and my brother to go just a little further, to bring dreams to reality and live out our fantasy, stamping Matthew 7, 7 on our minds, ask and you shall receive to believe in he, our Lord, Savior, and kings of kings. He has the power to give us the power. So no wonder I'm quoting Tupac when I say, you always was a black queen mama. I'm just thankful, grateful for everything she did for us. Sometimes she cussed, sometimes she whooped our butts, but that was just cause she didn't want us to walk away from her life in cuffs. She told me that sometimes she wished she had enough because she loved us more than enough yet with that love, she took two young sons and raised them to become men. And for that, dear mama, you are appreciated. So don't you know, we love you. That's my piece with uh, uh, dear mama. Thank y'all so much. Uh, you know, uh, so for those that are listening uh, or watching uh, on Facebook, you can you know, leave comments on the chat and so on and so forth, you know, to, you know, if you're feeling the piece and so on and so forth. All right. So. The next poet uh, coming on to the mic, uh, great person. I'm definitely excited to see what she's going to bring to the to the program. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Cassandra Scott. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Cassandra Scott. I am Miss Cass at the Avondale Library. I am an outreach storyteller, 
And uh, actually, I will not be sharing any of my own pieces today. I'm sharing two pieces. One of them, the first one is a, a piece uh, by Nikki Giovanni because she was the person, she was the poet who told me that I get to say what I need to say um, when I was 14 years old. So I'm gonna share this first piece is by Nikki Giovanni and it's called Legacies. Her grandmother called her in from the playground. Yes, ma'am. I want you to learn how to make rolls, said the old woman proudly. But the little girl didn't want to learn how because she knew, even if she didn't say it, that that would mean when the old one died, she would be less dependent on her spirit. So she said, I don't know how to make no rolls with her lips poked out. And the old woman wiped her hands on her apron saying, Lord, these children, and neither of them ever said what they meant. And I guess nobody ever does. That was Legacies by Nikki Giovanni. Um, the next piece that I wanna share with you guys is um, actually it's a piece by Oscar Brown Jr. And it's uh, and it was written on top of the music of, uh, uh, by um, uh, Bobby Timmons called Dat Dea. And it's like, okay, why is she talking like this? Well, it's written on top of that day. And I wanted to share this piece because it celebrates not only the responsibility and the demands, uh, but the privileges and joys of fatherhood. And we don't get to see that celebration in our community very much. So I wanted to share this piece. The music for it was written in 1960. And this piece is called That Dare. Hey, daddy, what that dare? And what, what that under there? And hey, daddy, oh, hey, daddy, look it over there. Hey, what they doing there? And where they going there? And daddy, can I have that big elephant over there? Hey, who that in my chair? And what she doing there? And daddy, oh, hey, daddy, can I go over there? Hey, daddy, what's the square? And where do we get air? And daddy, can I have that big elephant over there? My quizzical kid, man, he doesn't leave anything hid. He's forever demanding to know who, what, and why, and where. Inquisitive child, but sometimes the questions get wild, like, Daddy, can I have that big elephant over there? Don't want to comb my hair. And where's my teddy bear? And Daddy, oh, hey, Daddy, look at that cowboy over there. And can I have a pair of boots like that to wear? Daddy, can I have that big elephant over there? A time will march, days will go. That little fella's gonna grow. I gotta tell him all he needs to know. Help him along so he'll know right from wrong. Gotta make him strong. As life parade goes trudging by, he'll need to know some reasons why. I don't have all the answers, but I'll try to help him along so he'll know right from wrong, gotta make him strong. I don't have all the answers, but I'll try best as I can. I'm gonna help him plan so he can be a man. You give your kid your best and you hope he'll pass the test when you finally send him out into the world somewhere. <laughs> But I'm betting, no matter when he's grown, I'm betting I never will forget, Daddy, can I have that big elephant over there? Hey, what they do in there? And how you work that there? And Daddy, oh, hey, Daddy, what does say up there? Hey, Daddy, what is fair? How come I got to share? And Daddy, can I have that big elephant over there, Daddy? Can I have that big elephant over there, Daddy? Can I have that big elephant over there? That's it. Those are some of my favorite pieces. So I wanted to share them because they speak to family and they speak to the kind of family that I was privileged to grow up in. Thank you so much, Miss Cassandra Scott. Everybody, you know, snap, clap for, you know, her awesome reading of both pieces. Thank you so much. Uh, hope. Like I said, you know, if you are enjoying this program, you know, leave it in the comments on Facebook, uh, you know, uh, tag, you know, uh, who you know, and uh, also share, you know, on your Facebook page, you know, let everybody know that we're actually having a great program right now. All right. So coming up next, uh, this uh, awesome person, 
uh, really, really don't need no introduction because, you know, his name is well known around the city, you know. But, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce him anyway. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Judge Andrew Sparks. Andrew Sparks. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you. My name is uh, Andre Sparks, and I'm honored to serve as the uh, presiding judge at Birmingham Municipal Court for a while now, and I thank God for that opportunity. I'm glad to be able to share in this program this morning. I'm doubly glad to be able to have representation from the rest of my family here this morning. So my son, Anthony, and my grandson, Anthony, uh, Aiden, will also be on just a little bit later. I'm, uh, I'm so glad that this program is, is uh, available for us to discuss because the library was such a formative part of me growing up. And uh, I don't know that I would be uh, a judge today without the influence of the West End Library on Pearson Avenue, uh, where I lost many, 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 many hours just reading and escaping to other places beyond West End. I learned the ability to do that. So I want to thank the Birmingham Public Library for all this men in my life. This morning, I want to read um, a poem um, that's uh, illustrated by Katura Bobo and written by Grace Byers. Uh, Grace is a New York Times bestselling author. She, uh, she wrote a book entitled, I Am Enough. And the one this morning I wanna read is a positive one called, I Believe I Can. I Believe I Can. And, and Grace has written, I can sail like mighty ships, like the oceans, I run deep. I can stretch just like the Alps until I reach my highest peak. I can charge just like a train, like a rocket I'll ignite. Like a star, I can project my brightest shine against the night. I am like the lion's roar. I am like the dragon's flames. I'm worthy because I'm me, and there is value to my name. I can build just like a brick. I keep going just like a clock. I can hold just like cement. I can last just like a rock. Grounded firm, I'm like the soul. Like the sky, I'm boundless too. When I believe in myself, there's simply nothing I can't do. Like the hero, I am brave and face my fears despite my fright because I know I'm not alone and in the end, I'll be all right. Sometimes I'm right and sometimes I am wrong. But even when I make mistakes, I learn from them to make me strong. I may not win at all I do. I may experience defeat, but I'll dust off and try again and be the best that I can be. I know my power lies within. There's nothing that can hold me down. There is light within my smile. There is voice within my sound. My presence matters in this world. My life is worthy. There's a plan. I know I can do anything if only I believe I can. Thanks this morning for including me. Give it up for the Honorable Judge Sparks. Snaps, claps all around. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, hope everybody's enjoying the program so far. Uh, like I said, keep sharing, keep telling everybody about this program. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, Judge Sparks, you know, uh, he talks about his family, you know, his one of his sons is actually going to be speaking in the next few minutes. So hold tight. Hold tight. I only have one son, <laughs> baby brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't right. have one son, unless you know something I don't know. <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> All right. So coming up next is uh, another great person that's going to share a poem with us. It is Miss Rhonda Robinson. Are you ready? Yes, good morning. <laughs> My name is Rhonda Robinson. Thank you all so much for allowing me to be a part of such an important program. 
Um, I'm a former anchor reporter, television anchor reporter in the area. A lot of folks know me from the um, Fox 6 on your side days at WBRC. And I left there to start my own company, Carmine Communications, where I use, you know, that 25 plus years of experience in media. Now I help businesses and nonprofits get exposure. So thank you so much. And um, really looking forward to hearing all of the other speakers. I feel like I'm up here with family now, folks I hadn't seen in a while. And I'm just enjoying it so far. <clears throat> so I'm going to read uh, In the Morning by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And I love this poem. It's, it's a lot of fun for me because I used to be that child that didn't want to get up in the morning. <laughs> and then I'm the mama, you know, so I can relate to this poem on so many levels. <clears throat> All right. Thank you so much. In the Morning by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Liars, lies, bless the Lord. Don't you know this day's abroad? If you don't get up, you scamp. There'll be trouble in this here camp. Think I'm gonna let you sleep while I make sure board and keep. <laughs> That's a putty how to do. <laughs> don't you hear me lies, you? Bet if I come across this floor, you won't find no time to snow. Daylight all are shining in and while you sleep, why? It's a sin. Ain't the candlelight enough? to burn out without a snuff, but you go the morning through, burning up the daylight too. Lies, don't you hear me call? And no use turning to that wall. I can hear that matter squeak. Don't you hear me when I speak? Lies, this here clock done struck off six. k bring me them death sticks. <laughs> oh, you down, sir, yeah, you down. Look here, don't you dare to frown. Now make yourself and wash your face and don't you splatter all the place. I got something else to do besides just cleaning after you. Now take that comb and fix your head. <laughs> Looks just like a feather bed. Look here, boy, I let you see. You shan't roll your eyes at me. Come here, bring me that death strap. Boy, I'll whoop you till you drop. You done felt yourself too strong and you surely got me wrong. Now sit down at that table there, just you whipping if you dare every morning on this place. Seem like I'm gonna lose my grace. Now fold your hands and bow your head. Wait, wait, wait. Wait until the blessing said, Lord, have mercy on our souls. Now don't you dare to touch them rolls. <sighs> Bless this food we're gonna eat. You sit still, I see your feet. You just try that trick again. Give us peace and joy. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Snap it up, clap it up for Ms. <laughs> Robinson. Thank you so much for that awesome reading. All right. We're going to keep things moving uh, along. Uh, so the next uh, person uh, that's coming to the program uh, that's going to share a great piece is Ms. Saida Royal. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All righty, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. My name is Saida Royal. I attend A.H. Parker High School. I am a current senior there and SGA president. Today, I have written a poem called Stirring Part, and I'm prepared to read it. Stirring. Mixing, a pot of culture, everything passed down. Tradition, tradition, tradition. What traditions? I'll have to think about it. What's your name? The name of slaves, the name of strength, endurance, and patience. Then isn't that a legacy? A legacy built upon by those before you, those who strove to make something for you, your ancestors, grandparents, parents. These bonds that are no longer shackles, family bonds, tight bonds, supporting bonds, relationships ever changing, but the bond remains. What remains? Your connection, your ability to carry on, the legacy, the tradition, to add it all up and mix it up and stir it into your part of culture. Give it up once again for Saida Royal. Snap it up, snap it up. That was a great piece. Thank you so much for sharing that awesome piece uh, with us today. Uh, so uh, like, like I said, for those that are uh, listening or uh, following us on Facebook, make sure you leave a comment, you know, some snaps, 
you know, some claps on the comments as well, you know, saying this is a great support for, you know, uh, the Birmingham Library as, you know, other organizations uh, that, you know, partner for the program. All right, coming up next, um, I'm actually excited because uh, me and this guy actually went to high school together at the great Ramsey High School. Um, and I was so excited when I saw that, you know, his name was on the list. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Anthony Sparks. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you all so much for um, joining in and thank you for the privilege of participating in this amazing program uh, today. Uh, I have the privilege of sharing the platform with my son, uh, my oldest, Aiden Sparks, and he'll be reading something in just a moment. But before we jump into it, I just wanna say that the BPL has been super, super instrumental um, for me, both as a kid and as a professional, as a, um, a full-time entrepreneur. I've had the privilege of um, sharing with the BPL on multiple occasions, and they have always, always, always been um, gracious and supportive. And so BPL, thank you all for what you do, um, of course, in the community, but selfishly, thank you for the opportunities you've given me um, as a professional and also as a kid. Um, when I didn't quite have a, a car just yet, I spent the first couple of years in high school going to walking down to the South Side Library on the south side of town. And so I've got many, many great memories there. Um, and probably having that library to go to save me from some trouble, probably could have gotten in. So BPL, appreciate you again. <laughs> Thank you all so much for everything you've done um, in my life and the lives of so many others. And so without further ado, I wanna kick it to um, my son and he's gonna introduce himself as well as what he's reading today. Hi, my name is Aiden Sparks, and I'm going to be reading Go to the Back of the Bus, Rosa Parks. Go to the back of the bus, Rosa Parks. Go to the back and stay. No, I won't. I think that's unfair, and I'm just too tired today. But everyone knows the rules, Rosa Parks. Everyone knows if you're Black. You can't eat at white restaurants or buses. You sit in the back. So now it's time to move, Rosa Parks. No, I'm not moving at all. I've got a voice and I'm going to use it and thousands will hear the call. We're coming to sit with you, Rosa Parks. People black and white did say, we're coming to change America and bring equality here to stay. Yeah, good job, good job. Snap it up, snap it up, snap it up, snap it up. Good job. Great job, baby. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. You know, I'm saying, hey, y'all watch out. You know, saying that we might be looking at the next Langston Hughes. Nah, y'all better watch out. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because I want to read. Um, I'm, I'm going to read a poem by Langston Hughes, by the great Langston Hughes. Um, and the title of it is "Life Is Fine." Um, it's actually one that I found recently, and was um and was was pretty captivated by it because it talks about. Um, essentially the importance of perseverance. Um, we all have gone through a lot. We're experiencing a lot. And so uh, sometimes it's just important to realize and just say, life is fine. And it will be fine if it's not quite feeling like it is just yet. So that being said, life is fine by Langston Hughes. I went down to the river. I sat down on the bank. I tried to think, but couldn't. So I jumped in and sank. I came up once and hollered. I came up twice and cried. If that water hadn't have been so cold, I might have sunk and died. But it was cold in that water. It was cold. I took the elevator, 16 floors above ground. I thought about my baby and thought I might jump down. I stood there and I hollered. I stood there and I cried. If it hadn't have been so high, I might have jumped down and died. But it was high up there. Man, was it high. So since I'm still here living, I guess I'll live on. I could have died for love, but for living, I was born. Though you may hear me holler and you may see me cry, I'll be doggone sweet baby if you gonna see me die. Life is fine, fine as wine. Life is fine. Snaps, claps all around. Thank you so much, Anthony. You know what I'm saying, for that awesome reading, uh, man. It's crazy, you know, uh, you have the whole Sparks family, you know, doing their thing. So, hey, 
Uh, definitely honored, you know, for uh, everyone uh, that's participated so far. Uh, for those that are listening in, obviously Birmingham and the Public Library, you know, they do believe, you know, in pushing, you know, uh, great poetry, great literature, you know, so on and so forth. Matter of fact, they actually have a program, you know, every first Friday, I do believe, uh, bars and groups. So if you're interested in listening to poetry or if you want to just try it out, you know, uh, it's every first Friday. I know they're doing it virtually, uh, you know, to uh, for safe, you know, for safe distancing. Uh, so definitely look out for the next event for Bars and Brews to participate and go on from there. All right. Uh, if you are having a great time so far, leave it in the comments. Uh, you know, uh, give honor to you know all the panelists so far as they're doing their thing. All right. So coming up next, uh, this is. Uh, you know, a great honor because of the fact, you know, I've been following her work for quite some time now. Uh, we've been working with each other, you know, sent around the city. Uh, so I was definitely excited when I saw her name on the list. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Ashley Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and thank you, Candace, also for helping organize this event. Um, since everybody's kind of sharing what the library has meant to them, I will say as a kid, the library was my favorite place, the Central Branch and the Springville Road Library near where I live in Roebuck. Um, we, we spent so many hours there reading and um, it's where I started to love writing. Um, and so now um, I'm a writer professionally and I teach as well. So the library definitely had a hand in that. So I wanted to read um, two poems to y'all today. The first one um, is from my first book, Magic City Gospel. And um, I had the great privilege to grow up in a family that told me from day one, being black is a fabulous thing. It's a thing to be celebrated. And you can see yourself in everything. You can even see yourself in God. So this poem talks about a tradition that we still have um, uh, at Christmas time. And it's called How to Make Your Daughters Culturally Aware and Racially Content During Christmas Time. Remind them, Jesus is black. Despite the pictures granny has hung on the wall, despite the glowing good old boy on her pile of church fans, Jesus was a brother, a bruh, not a bro. Hair of wool, you tell them. Buy a new nativity set, Mary with her press and curl, Joseph with a fade, baby Jesus fresh out the womb and curly. Go to a roadside Christmas shop, buy a pale smiling Santa. Let your daughters wonder how he turned brown overnight, how Santa's face became just like their own, brown and buttery, a Yuletide miracle. When you're trimming your plastic tree, the one you've had since the 80s, Put on Rudolph, bopped by the temptations. Deck the halls by Smokey, Donny Hathaway's This Christmas, and Gladys Knight's deep brown voice crooning jingle bells. Fill the tree skirt with tightly wrapped gifts. Anticipate your daughter's unbreakable smiles when they rip off the paper to reveal an army of black Barbies and brown baby dolls. And we still have that Black Santa to this day. It's my favorite Christmas decoration. Um, so the last poem that I'll read is from my forthcoming collection called Reparations Now. And this poem, um, I was asked to write what it means to be a Southern woman. And so this is the poem that I came up with. I cannot talk about the South without talking about Black women. My grandmother's made America, made the fibers that made us warm, made us invincible, heroines. To tell you who they are, I must start with who they are not. Servants, kitchen bound mammies, silently obedient wives. We can't in our modern comforts, imagine the survival they learned was theirs to claim can't hold the light they burned through this colonial darkness. What tricks this nation, this American South pulled minute by minute to keep my grandmothers convinced. The body you're in is not enough. Your race and gender work together to mark you less 
to mark you takeable. But what they didn't know was that my grandmothers still had an unmovable strength, enough to build a bridge from here to heaven. I know when I leave this broken earth, I'll find them there, sweetening every hour. My grandmothers raised a generation of American men. There is no other way to say this. Look at any Southern family and you'll find somewhere in a past most will not claim a black woman. These men who call themselves bootstrapping and self-made somewhere there's a black woman and her unthanked hands who lifted them to where they are now. My father tells a story of the sons of his grandmother's employers, how they, instead of the pension she was promised, decided to give her an old tire, an old suitcase, dusty in the yard. What thanks is this for the years she raised that family, for the care they cannot forget my father could never forgive those men, their Southern tradition, their American tradition. Even now, they tell us black women are going to save this whole nation with votes or magic or our style taken and renamed. But this is no longer the land of masses and mammies and we are only superheroines for our own daughters and sons. My grandmothers did not give their lives for me to keep nursing this country, to keep shucking and jiving in a bizarro American dream. My grandmothers are worth more than this corrupt remembering. Now there is no room for the Dixieland lie. We no longer hold these truths you made us accept. Under God, yes, we hear him singing a song of powerful love despite the united hate of America. Grandmothers, women made of salt and spirit, you are faith continuous. Continue us, raise us to be heroes and heroines, to tell this country that we are not mules, not beasts. You, an army of workers and wives, we hid our fears and woes in your indestructible ever-present ladiness. The blood you pass down to us is all we will ever need to save our lives. Thank you. All right, snap it up, clap it up for Miss Ashley Jones. All right, thank you so much. Uh, before we move on, can you uh, share with us, you know, how can we uh, find your books? Yeah, you can find everything you want to know about me at my website, www.ashleymjonespoetry.com. All right. So please, um, for those that's watching and listening in, we please, uh, you know, visit her website, get her books and so on and so forth. We definitely want to support, you know, our local authors, you know, um, as we believe, you know, in the, you know, supporting the foundation of not only just uh, poetry, but literature, period, you know, so. Uh, it all starts with, you know, the local support. All right. All right. If you are having a great time, please leave it in the comments, you know, snap it up, clap it up. Uh, as we move on to the next uh, person in our panel that is uh, going to share a great piece, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Lonnie Jones. Hi, I'm Olivia Jones. I'm a 10th grader at Ramsey High School. My dad is going to be reading a book after me. I'm going to be reading two. First one is called Don't Touch My Hair by Cherie Miller. I'm Aria and this is my hair. I love my hair. It's soft and bouncy and grows up toward the sun like a flower. I love it up or down. Styled or wild, I don't care. I just want it to be free. Actually, everyone loves my hair too. When I walk down the street, I hear so many compliments. It's great that people love my hair, but some love it so much they want to touch it. I don't like this. They are curious about my hair. They are so curious about my hair that they try to touch it without even asking for permission. What does it feel like? Oh, I want to feel. Me too. 
I get very good at avoiding hands. I have to start looking for ways to hide my hair. I try blending in with scenery, but I'm quickly spotted. Over here. I try hiding underwater, but that doesn't last long. Oh, I love your hair. Can I touch it? I escape to the jungle, but the critters just can't keep their hands to themselves. Let me touch. No, me. Me first. Even in the tallest castle tower, someone is always there, ready, ready and waiting to touch my hair. Girl, your hair is fierce. No matter how far I go, it doesn't seem to matter. How did you get it so big? Finally, I find a place where no one wants to touch my hair. But after a few hours, I get lonely. I decide to go home. I try my best to ignore the attention, but as the hand sinks into my hair, I decide I can't take it anymore. That's it. That's enough. Don't touch my hair. This is my hair. It's great that you love it. I love it too. But please just look and don't touch without my permission. The next time someone wants to touch my hair, they ask, can I touch your hair? I reply, not today. Okay. Now it feels great to walk down the street without anyone trying to touch my hair. My curls are free to reach for the sun, just like a flower. Some people still ask to touch my hair, but if I say no, they listen. How are you today? Hello. But if you ask nicely, sometimes I say yes. And that is don't touch my hair. And the second one I'm reading is called Hair, It's a Family Affair by Milo Freeman. Quiet children, Miss Brown, the teacher claps her hands. It's Macy's turn to tell us about her family. Macy's eyes light up. I'm going to tell you about my family's hair. When my grandma was young, she had a big afro like a ball of cotton candy, says Macy. She looked really amazing. Her afro is smaller now, but she still looks amazing. My big sister and her friends have different hairstyles, cornrows, locks, and an afro. They think they look really cool, Macy chuckles. My mom has promised my little brother a, new, a cute new haircut. I hope he can keep still, says Macy. I love combing my baby sister's hair, Macy smiles. She has the softest, sweetest smelling hair and I'm the only one she lets brush it. My mom always says that hair is a family affair and helping each other saves a lot of time too, Macy giggles. I love my big cousin Kiki. One week her hair is purple and the next is bright pink. She has so much style, Macy sighs. I wanna look just like her when I grow up. When I grow up, I'm going to be a famous doctor and my best friend Troy will be a hairdresser. Well, now I've talked about everyone in my family and their hair, except for one person, Macy pauses. And that's my dad, because he has no hair at all, Macy chuckles, but we love him anyway. All the children in the classroom clap and cheer. Well done, Macy. That was lovely, says Miss Brown. And that was hair. It's a family affair. Good morning. Uh, I'm Lonnie Jones, and as you see, I don't have any hair, hence uh, the reason she read the book. Uh, I want to thank Candace and everyone who was uh, uh, involved in putting this together. I'm currently employed as a librarian for the Homewood Public Library, but uh, I got my start here in Metro Birmingham in 1987 when I was hired at the uh, Birmingham Public Library. So I do have roots with Birmingham Public and I worked there uh, for a number of years, part time and full time. Uh, when the email came across, um, I called Candace and said, uh, you know, what's going on with this? What kind of program is it? She explained it. And then I inquired as to how I could be a part and how my daughter could be a part. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, 
uh, interpretation of Langston Hughes's um, dream variation. And it's more so, um, well, the words are very important, but I also like the illustration. And the um, illustrator is Daniel uh, Mieres. I may be mispronouncing it, I'm not sure. If it doesn't show well uh, in Zoom, then uh, you can check it out. That is, that is my dream. And I also want to encourage everyone, uh, if you don't have a library card, to go and get one. Libraries are still relevant, especially to uh, people of color because uh, it has a lot of resources. People always ask me, you know, why are you guys still open? What do you do? And I say, come visit us and then you'll see. And uh, when they stop by, they're always impressed at the number of things that uh, we have to offer. So that's my library plug and now I'll get the reading. This is my dream to fling my arms wide in a place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done. Then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. That is my dream, to fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest at pale evening, a tall, slim tree. Night coming tenderly. Black like me. And again, it's a variation of uh, Langston Hughes's poem, uh, Dream Variation, or it's an, it's an interpretation and uh, I was just really impressed by the uh, illustrations in the book. And again, thanks for uh, allowing me to be a part of this. That's all. All right, snap it up, clap it up for uh, Lonnie and Olivia Jones. Thank y'all so much for the awesome readings. Uh, and also appreciate Mr. Lonnie Jones for, for uh, the uh, statement as far as getting a library card. Uh, I also uh, want to reiter reiterate, you know, the importance of, you know, getting your library card. There's a lot of resources at the library, uh, you know, and of course, you know, get, you know, any kind of books you want, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, definitely go to the library, get your card. You know, what, what, what else you got to lose? That's all I gotta say, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So, uh, thank y'all so much uh, for all the uh, following panelists for uh, joining in. And now we are coming down to our last panelist. Uh, she is an awesome person, and I'm definitely excited to see you know what she's going to bring to the program. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Aaliyah Taylor. Hi, good morning. Um, so. As I said, my name is Aaliyah Taylor. I also work at the Homewood Public Library in the Children's Library, but Birmingham Public Library has been such a safe refuge for me growing up, um, whether being a product of Titusville, going to the Titusville Library I, um, from Center Street, or walking down the hill on the South Side to go to South Side Library um from Ramsey so <laughs> the library has been a deep part yes Ramsey Rams okay <laughs> so today I want to first start off reading um it's a really awesome book by Jacqueline Woodson who's an amazing poet um it's called we had a picnic this Sunday pads and then I'll close out with a my Angelou poem all right let's see Grandma wore her blue dress with all those flowers on it, brought biscuits and chicken and meat. Everything she made a big show of putting on. Got up for this morning to make this chicken, best batch I ever made. 
these biscuits just as tasty. Can't chew for swallowing, can hardly swallow because he's reaching for more. And look at my grandchild, just as pretty as a day. Turn around and show them that dress I made you, Tika. Oh, how grandma can brag when she wants to. Then turning to me, she whispered, I hope Martha don't bring that pie again. Everyone says that pie's a bit on the dry side, but not in front of cousin Martha because that will hurt her feelings. Grandma says Martha should be in any room but the kitchen. Says she thinks she scares the stove into baking bag. Every year, same cousin Martha, same dried out apple pie. And you better eat every bite of it so you don't hurt her feelings. Now, Luther is grandma's oldest. He married Lucinda, and now they got this mean old cousin of mine named Terrence. Terrence brought plastic flies and put them right on Auntie Sadie's sweet cob corn. Goodness, can't Auntie Sadie scream and gives the ear a pinch if need one and whisper to grandma, you seen how the hair of Martha's pie? Uncle Luther said a loaf of cinnamon bread in the center of things. Grandma smiling just as proud said, can't my boy bake bread? Look at that, look at my second cousin, Jefferson, Laurie's son. He think he's so cute. Mm. Auntie Kim, my all time favorite. She's the smart one. She teaches second grade, I whisper to Paulette. Now Paulette's no relation, she's just my best friend. Don't go bragging, grandma said, nudging me, but you can tell she's just as proud. Auntie Kim doesn't want to marry and maybe me and Paulette won't either. I brought some cranberry muffins, Auntie Kim said, and cookies shaped like angels for my angel. Handed me one. Then here come cousin Trevor, came empty handed as always. Pretty boy Trevor walking into that park with a handful of nothing. I can't eat air, I whispered to Paulette. Don't you be a smarty, Grandma said, but you know she was thinking the exact same thing. Cousin Trevor picked Daisy as he strutted up, talking about daisies for all the pretty ladies. Hmm, Grandma said, hmm, me and Paulette echoed. Still no sign of Cousin Martha. Still no sign of that pie. Moon Pie and Callie, Moon Pie. Well, his real name is Joseph. But he don't, he don't look like Joseph. He looks just like a moon pie. Came empty handed too. Nobody can eat that smile you brought for the camera, moon pie. Sister Carol and Reverend Luke told her the Bible to the picnic. Reverend Luke can eat like the devil. Strange since he's such a holy man. Little Astrid, two front teeth missing, trail behind them carrying a pail of peaches fresh as summer. Tooth fairy bring you anything, Paulette wanted to know. I got a quarter for them, Astra said, and held out his hand to show us the shiny quarter there. Then Mr. Pete came running. He got a thing for grandma. Mr. Pete, well, you can set that sweet potato pie right over here by me, I said. Wasn't that peach cobbler Miss Mary's daughter Pat brought just out of this world? and yams and potato salad and collars and big old ham and grandma's chicken fried crisp and tender melt in your mouth cornbread, yoo-hoo. Then here come cousin Martha with a big pink box out in front of her just as proud smiling. Goodness, grandma whispered. Don't tell me she made two pies this year. No time to bake, said Martha. Store-bought cakes and my apologies. Oh, but cousin Martha, grandma said, all year long I've been thinking about that pie. Goodness, that picnic table was something to see. Topped it all off with cookies and melon, homemade ice cream, and the most delicious store-bought cake cousin Martha never baked. We had a picnic this Sunday pass. You should have been there. And last but not least, um, since we're talking about the Black family and celebrating it, um, Maya Angelou wrote a poem called The Black Family Pledge. And I think it's just something that we, I think as Black men and women to be reminded of, of what our duty is as brothers and sisters. Because 
We have forgotten our ancestors, our children no longer give us honor. Because we have lost the path, our ancestors cleared, kneeling in perilous undergrowth, our children cannot find their way. Because we have banished the God of our ancestors, our children cannot pray. Because the old wells of our ancestors have faded beyond our hearing, our children cannot hear us crying. Because we have abandoned our wisdom of mothering and fathering, our befuddled children give birth to children they never wanted nor understand. Because we have forgotten how to love, the adversary is within our gates and holds us up to the mirror of the world shot in. Regard the loveless, therefore, we pledge to bind ourselves to one another, to embrace our lowliest, to keep company with our loneliest, to educate our illiterate, to feed our starving, to clothe our ragged, to do all good things, knowing that we are more than keepers of our brothers and sisters. <laughs> we are brothers and sisters in honor of those who told and implored God with golden tongues and in gratitude to the same God who brought us out of hopeless desolation we make this pledge and that's it <laughs> snap it up clap it up for a miss Aaliyah taylor and it's awesome that she you know she closes out the reading of maya angelou you know who's like the enemy of poetry you know what i mean so thank you so much miss Aaliyah taylor for oh uh that is pretty much it. Uh, I want to thank all the panelists for their contributions to the program. Uh, thank you to Ms. Uh, Candice uh, for this opportunity, uh, you know, to honor, you know, African American poetry and so on and so forth. Uh, before we go, um, I think we can call, uh, turn it over to Ms. Uh, Candice if she wanted to, you know, have any last words to uh, say for the program. To our panelists, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. You did a phenomenal job with bringing this project to life. Um, again, we want to extend our gratitude to um, the American Library Association, as well as the Sconberg Center for Research of Black Culture for affording us an opportunity to participate in the Lift Every Voice nationwide celebration of 250 years of African American poetry. Today, we celebrated the family. I mean, guys, we had fathers at the forefront. Did you hear me? Fathers at the forefront. Look at your screen right now. I can't look down, but look at your screen. Do you see what I see? I think that we're headed in a beautiful direction, guys. Don't forget that you have an opportunity to also continue this cycle of making a difference in your community by purchasing a Read Woke Beham t-shirt that you see myself and some of the panelists wearing today. Yeah, you may do so by calling me at 205-226-3741. As of Monday morning, all of our materials are $10 and your, your proceeds that are collected, the proceeds that are collected will be uh, generated to provide programming to our youth, to our senior citizens, to some of our adults and teens as well. Um, so get plugged in with your Birmingham Public Library. Don't allow today to be the last time that we have an opportunity to see you. Visit us um, at cobpl.org or on all social media handles. You may follow us at Birmingham Public Library or simply drive to your nearest location of the 18 locations that we have. Mm -hmm. So get to your nearest library and don't forget that the library is a vital resource to your community. We thank you so much for your time, for your participation, for your likes, your shares, and we want you to come into your local libraries to check out some of the material that was shared with you this morning. To our panel again, thank you all so much. Continue to have a beautiful Saturday. <laughs>